In this session, we're going to show creating LT Spice Netlist using uh, more complicated circuit elements such as dependent sources. So we'll start here opening up our LT Spice Netlist folder, right clicking and creating a new text document. Call this Netlist 3. Change the um, extension to CRR and then open this up in LT Spice. This is the circuit we're going to create a net list for. And notice we have a dependent source here that is a voltage dependent voltage source uh, with a gain of three and the voltage across that source depends on the voltage here defined as VA and we'll see how we enter that into our uh, net list. Uh, the first thing we need to look at is um, we have already seen that current sources are designated as I's, resistors are designated as R's and so this is a new type of device and we have to give a different designation for that. The help menu in LT Spice gives a tremendous amount of information about uh, LT Spice, so let's open that up. And if we go to from this point to the LT Spice folder, and then under the LT Spice folder, we open open up the circuit elements list. And this is the list of all the circuit elements that LT Spice can handle and the prefix is associated with each of these. For example, you see a voltage source here as V, you see a current source here as I, you see a resistor as R. E, F, G, and H are the four types of dependent sources that are available. So an E source is a voltage dependent voltage source, an F source is a current dependent current source, G is voltage dependent current and H is current dependent voltage source. So if you don't know what prefix to put on your device then you can open up the help menu right here and determine it that way. So we will create our net list and I will start out with sources and I will define the sources here as the I1 source and notice I already have my nodes designated in, uh, L in my, on my circuit so the I1 source is going to be listed as positive terminal at 4, negative terminal at 2 again remember the passive convention says that current enters the positive terminal so this will be a 5 amp source current entering going from bottom to top exiting at the top so I have to define that as node 4 to node 2 with a 5 amp source. My only other source is this dependent source. This is a voltage dependent voltage source. So that is designated with an E. And I'll just call that E1. And its positive terminal is at, is at node 1. The negative terminal is at node 4. And then the next thing you list is the dependency. The VA is defined over here with a positive terminal at node 0 or the reference ground and a negative terminal at node 5. So we, the next items we enter on our net list line are 0 and 5. 0 for the positive terminal of VA and 5 for the negative terminal of VA. And then the last thing we enter is the gain. And this is the gain right here of 3 for that uh, particular device. And so this deserves a little explanation. This is a voltage dependent voltage source with gain of 3. Okay, now we can go about defining our resistors. And I'll just move from uh, left to right and then top to bottom. So I will call the uh, 20 ohm resistor a uh, resistor 1. And notice we're, we are setting up here to do a mesh analysis. 
and so the I1 current, if I'm going to use this resistor 1, this 20 ohm resistor as my, to measure my mesh current, then I want to define the positive terminal at 1 and the negative terminal at 2, so, I, so the resistor will measure the current going from left to right. So that will be terminal 1 is the, or node 1 is the positive terminal, node 2 is the negative terminal, and this is a 20 ohm resistor. Resistor 2 will be a 6 ohm resistor and again so that uh, mesh current 2 can be measured using this resistor I will define the positive terminal at 2 and the negative terminal at 3. Resistor 3 I will define as this 11 ohm resistor between node 3 and node 5. Resistor 4 I will define as the 25 ohm resistor and that is between node 4 and node 5. I'm not concerned about the polarity on this one because uh, it's not used to measure any of the particular mesh currents so I'll just uh, go left to right on that. That's a 25 ohm resistor. And then resistor 6 I'll define as this 5 ohm resistor, or resistor 5, excuse me, resistor 5. And if I use this to measure mesh current 3, then the uh, positive terminal needs to be at 1, or excuse me, at node 0, the reference ground, and the negative terminal needs to be at node 4. So that will be 0 to 4 and a 5 ohm resistor. And then resistor 6. will be the 12 ohm resistor and I will define it positive terminal at node 5, negative terminal at node 0. And again that designation will also give me mesh current 3 going from 5 to 0 down through the 12 ohm resistor. Don't let the definition of VA here uh, determine the polarity. That's, uh, that really is not even relevant to the polarity of the resistor itself. That only determines this voltage here VA its polarity that the uh, uh, dependent source is dependent on. Okay, all the resistors are now defined and uh, since we are doing mesh analysis here it's a good idea to designate those mesh currents in your net list. Uh, these are simply comments but uh, we will say mesh current 1 is given by I R1 mesh current 2 is given by I R2 and mesh current 3 is given by I, uh, you can use R5 or R6 just like you could use R2 or R3 for mesh current 2. So we will just use R5 there. Either one works. And now uh, the directive will be dot OP get the DC operating point. And so we can execute this and we get our results here the node voltages at each node are given here and uh, if we're looking for our mesh currents the mesh current 1 is IR1 here is IR1 right here a negative 3.54 amps mesh current 2 is given by um, the R2 resistor so IR2 that's 1.46 amps and mesh current 3 is R5, uh, 0.868 amps is the result for that.